You may have seen recently advertisements for a show on HBO called The Young Pope, and I haven't seen it. I, I can't recommend it or anything, but just from the previews, it shows a lot of decadence and um, a lot of kind of what we can call scandalous scenes. And if you know the history of the popes, that's something that people like to talk about a lot, is there have been popes that were huge sinners that did some terrible and horrible things. So today we're going to talk about those corrupt popes and what that has to do with the church today. So it's probably happened to you where you were sitting in history class at some point learning about uh, medieval times or the Renaissance and the papacy, the popes probably came up. And a lot of times focusing on different popes who were corrupt, who waged war, who uh, did all sorts of deception and, and things and immoral things in order to get positions, positions of power. And you might ask, what is the, is the pope? What does that have to do with the pope today? You look at Pope Francis today. What does he have to do with those popes back then? And why would the Catholic Church follow the pope? That seems kind of crazy if you think of this long line of corrupt popes that there's been. Well, the popes, it goes all the way back to Peter. If you look at corrupt popes or popes who were sinners, it goes all the way back to Peter. Jesus, uh, when, when Peter professed his faith in Jesus that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus changed Simon's name to Peter, which means rock. And he says, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And so, this, he gives him this authority and this title. Now that authority and that title has been passed on to the successors of St. Peter. Peter died in Rome, um, but the successors of St. Peter continue with that same authority. Now Peter started off not on so great that, that great of a foot, even though he had that authority from Jesus. He also uh, was called Satan by Jesus right after that. He denied Jesus three times. Um, he was a sinful man. He was a weak man, but Jesus' authority was still with him. That's what, what we understand about the popes. Even though there have been uh, and there will be in the future popes who are sinners. Every single pope has been a sinner, actually. Some of them bigger sinners than others or more, more extravagant sinners than others. But the truth of the papacy and the power of that and their ability to, to speak authoritatively is not based on the man himself. It's based on Jesus, on his promise. So when you hear about that, when you hear about the evil that popes have done, you'd be like, absolutely. You know, myself as a priest, when people say, you know, the things that priests, uh, there's been evil um, people in the clergy, I, I say, I recognize I'm in the clergy and I'm a sinner myself. And the goodness of the Catholic Church is not based on the holiness of each one of the individual members or even of the ones in authority, or even the Pope, but the goodness of the Catholic Church is that we are founded by Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is with us and his power is with us to help us to be more than just sinners, to help us to become saints, because that's what God wants for each one of us, from the Pope down to every single person on planet Earth, to become the great saint, someone that, that is, is, sets the world ablaze by their life. So even in hearing about the corrupt popes, hopefully that doesn't help you to, to uh, diminish your faith, but to grow in your faith. If God can do something with them, he can do something with, great with you as well. Because you and I, as always, are made for glory. Thanks so much for watching today, and God bless.